Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, September 30th. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The Maryland game is in seven days. The game against Michigan in 56 days. Buckeyes off today. Have the, the one off weekend of the season, so uh, make sure you enjoy it. But you can also, you know, you don't have to necessarily go pick apples or like go look at leaves or whatever. You can just sit on the couch at home and watch college football. That is an option as well. And today, if you choose that option, we're going to be running through some of some of what you get a, a chance to watch today. Not exactly up to the caliber of last week, but so few weeks are. But a pretty good week of college football altogether. We're going to be doing that with our buddy Tony Gerdeman of BuckeyeHuddle.com. Tony, I guess let's start with the noon game on Fox. Big noon Saturday, USC at Colorado. Trojans a 21 and a half point favorite. I assume Alex Grinch can't possibly hold Colorado to what six points or whatever it was that they had last weekend. So is this is this a weekend that Colorado gets right and makes this a little bit closer, or is this going to be a second straight week where they get just smoked? I, I think the answer to that can be yes on both of those accounts. I think it will be closer, and yes, I do think they will still get smoked. But that over under is seventy three and a half. They're going to be a bunch of points scored. So I, I'll be interested to see how much Colorado can keep up in that. It was interesting watching this game in the Notre Dame press box, people just like walking by the TV and just looking at it, you know, score like 28, nothing or 35, nothing. And just being like, Ugh. like, Oh no, this is poor Colorado, that sort of thing. And I think there's going to be some more of that in this, but I think the Buffalo offense will have more fight in them because the USC defense has less fight in them. Yeah, that, that'll be, uh, it'll be pointy. I'm going to guess you're going to be a little more, a little more uh, action packed than the Ohio state. Notre Dame game was, but uh, probably not as dramatic at the end. Next up, the Deep South's oldest rivalry. One of the uh, Deep South's great crossover games in the SEC, Georgia at Auburn, 3.30 on CBS. I had to explain to my son that even though it's spelled Jordan Hare, it's pronounced Jordan Hare, and he asked why, and I said, I don't know. That's just how they do it. I don't know. Uh, this is, you know, why? who is Georgia playing? Who is the best team that Georgia is playing this year during the regular season? I also don't know, like maybe Tennessee, but also they just lost to Florida and Florida lost to Utah. And is it Auburn, Tony? Is Auburn the best team Georgia's playing during the regular season this year? Because the list is not impressive. I guess it just depends on if this is a day where an Auburn quarterback plays well. If it is, perhaps. If it isn't, no. And Peyton Thorne, Robbie Ashford, a quarterback situation going on there. You never really know what you're going to get. And that's part of the problem with them. But don't, for me, I still, anytime I see somebody go to Auburn, it's like crazy stuff happens there. And I don't know that Georgia's offense is so great or Georgia's defense is so great right now to avoid something crazy. But is this Auburn team at the level of normal craziness that we've seen in the past? And I don't know if it is, but I think at some point, Hugh Freeze is going to get somebody this year, maybe. Maybe it does. It, this it feels like he might be a year away because boy, uh, the Brian Harson thing. I personally was shocked that a guy from Boise, Idaho, was not a great cultural fit in Auburn, Alabama. I didn't see that coming. I don't know who possibly could have seen that coming, uh, but he didn't tend to recruit real well. So the cupboard was a little bit bare for Hugh Freeze. So uh, he had to get on the phone and uh, start dialing and uh, start start bringing in talent. Tony, if you have uh, any tips on uh, picking this game, email compliance at olmiss.edu. If not, yeah, we'll we'll see. This, I, this just feels like Auburn is just going to get out talented. I think in this one, but yeah, it's it is not not an impressive slate for Georgia this year, and this might be the one of the better teams that they played during the regular season. Hey, Tony, speaking of teams that don't play anyone so far, uh, haven't played anyone so far this season, let's talk about the Michigan Wolverines. Unquestionably the best game they've played, uh, the best opponent they've played, and they're going on the road to play a multi-loss Nebraska team. 17-point favorites uh, are the Wolverines, 330 on Fox, a uh, little big noon slash big mid-afternoon Doubleheader on Fox. I mean, I guess Nebraska's history of keeping games close and then losing them at the end sort of bodes a little better for this maybe being a little bit more of an interesting Michigan game than we've seen in the past, what, four weeks? But I'm not holding out hope for a four-quarter game here. 
No, and if Michigan plays down to Nebraska, maybe Nebraska can make some plays to keep it like a one or two score game. Since Nebraska has installed Heinrich Carberg as their starting quarterback, they're two and zero with wins, very impressive wins over Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. So give them some credit there. But this is a guy who runs the ball a lot, and I, that could be an equalizer as long as Nebraska doesn't turn it over. Maybe they pick up some third downs and keep drives going and. We know Michigan is in no hurry to increase numbers of possessions. So just by that fact alone, maybe Michigan can't get out to a 31-point lead just because there's not going to be as many possessions and they have to be effective. And I don't think Nebraska's defense has been that bad this season. They've given up 10 points, 14 points, 11 points, 14 points. And, or actually, sorry, 36 points to um, to Colorado. That's been the best offense they've seen. And that's the, the best offense, uh, best performance against their defense. and. Michigan's not as attacking as that Colorado offense, so I, I like the low scoring, uh, the the low over under. I think it's like thirty nine or something like that. Um, so I, I just I'm interested to see what Michigan does against Harburg and how well they contain his running ability. Not that he can throw the ball much because he can't, so they should be able to contain him. But he's gone off the last couple of weeks against much lesser defenses. Our ball against Harburg. If they played at the Notre Dame Library, it would be Hesburg. I, I I can't believe I just said three different things there. I then maybe arguably correctly the same three, the, the correct three things. That was uh, against all odds. I, yeah, I. This is a Michigan team that feels like it's doing just enough to win these games by enough that no one really worries about it, but not with. Any extra flair, flail, uh, flair. There we go. I, tar- I cursed myself by talking about how I can say words, flair or style. It, it's just it's been like just enough to get the job done and then move on. So this will be a little bit more of a test. Will be interesting to see if they can do a little bit more than they have the previous few weeks. Uh, next up, Kansas at Texas, three thirty on ABC. And as soon as Texas won in Tuscaloosa, Tony, I thought the funniest possible outcome would be Texas blowing. Well, the funniest possible outcome would have been Texas losing the next week to Wyoming, which they kind of went, kind of looked like for three quarters they might. But I, I think losing again to Kansas at home, almost unquestionably, one of the funniest things that could happen in college football. Longhorn is a sixteen and a half point favorite. That they're not, they're not going to do the extremely funny thing, are they, Tony? I think I tweeted the exact same thing that you just said right after that win that this is going to happen. So now that it's here, like, well, you got to stick to your guns, right? Uh, you know, maybe not necessarily. But this is a, a Kansas team who you know, has eked by, you know, th- an 11 point win over Illinois, a seven point win over Nevada, 11 over BYU. Like, these have not been impressive. But we know they have the ability to get up for games like this. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stick with Texas on this one. I think it might. I would be shocked if it's close. But being in Austin and just the way Texas is going right now, it feels like offensively and defensively they're more cohesive than they've been in the past. So I'm. I, I don't know about the sixteen and a half, but I like Texas in this one. That's kind of where I would lean as well, Texas, but maybe not giving the points. Lance Leipold is, I have been a long, long time Lance Leipold supporter, and it just, it feels like he's going to end up at Michigan State next year. That just feels like where this is sort of drifting at the moment. He is a Wisconsin guy. We'll we'll see. Uh, I don't think uh, the uh, current interim staff at Michigan State is doing itself any favors in terms of uh, being front runners for that job next year. So we'll see. Uh, We'll see what that looks like. But that's that's a next-year problem. Let's talk about two teams with this-year problems, and that is LSU and Ole Miss. And they're going to play this weekend in Oxford, 6 o'clock on ESPN. This is a little bit of a college football playoff elimination game because both of these teams come in with one loss. LSU, of course, got smoked by Florida State Week 1. Uh, Ole Miss lost. I, I mean, I, really a disappointing loss, I think, for Ole Miss last week against Alabama. I think they felt like this was the year they might get tied, and then they just never really threatened any kind of serious way. Lost 24-10. LSU, just a two-and-a-half-point favorite this weekend, Tony. Who is going to survive to be in the college football playoff picture for at least one more week? You know, I, I know who everybody will be rooting for around the nation. Like College football coaches will be rooting for Ole Miss in this one just to get LSU out of the picture 
Jaden Daniels out of the picture. He's playing really, really well right now at quarterback. And just the overall deal with LSU and the talent that they have, just let's, let's remove them and be good with that. I, Ole Miss, Lane Giffen, I think, needs this win. Not that he's in any danger, but this would be a good win for them. And it would, there's there's almost this thing, if, if you are the coach at Ole Miss or the coach at Mississippi State or something like that, you have to cause pain to other programs certain weeks. And this is one of those where if you're doing your job, you've got to cause some pain to somebody else because you didn't do it last week against Alabama when you had a chance, you had a halftime lead. So um, it, it's hard for me to pick against Jaden Daniels right now, but this is a, this is a game that Ole Miss should win. As you're describing Ole Miss as a team that just kind of exists to cause pain for other teams in its league, is Ole Miss the Purdue of the SEC? I don't know if there's as good at, at doing it as Purdue. Purdue is pretty, um, you know, masochist, sadomasochistic and all of this. You know, they, they enjoy what they do, um, and, and they're really good at it. Uh, maybe Ole Miss needs to get a little bit, I don't know, rustier. Purdue as the sadist. Why do you think Purdue Pete has that hammer? Questions Questions you never thought you'd need answered. Here we go. There, there's, there's your answer, Fishbowl. All right, last one. And this one for Ohio State fans might be the biggest game of the week with the Buckeyes off. Notre Dame at Duke. That's a 7.30 game on ABC. Notre Dame just a five and a half point favorite. I have spent all week thinking, boy, it's probably a good thing for Ohio State that they don't have some kind of a tricky road trip coming up this week. Because after a game like that, you need a little time to recover both physically and mentally and emotionally. Notre Dame does not have the benefit of any of that. They have to go on the road and they have to do it against a Duke team that's got, I mean, they have looked pretty darn good this year. I mean, everyone I'm sure remembers the uh, week one win over Clemson. That was a really, really, that was an eye-opening win, I think, in terms of what Duke football is under Mike Elko. This seems like a real danger spot for Notre Dame. And, you know, Ohio State fans need Notre Dame to remain a really quality win for Ohio State because if they slip up later in the year, if Notre Dame is a top five team, that makes that win look a lot better for Ohio State and probably helps Ohio State's playoff case if they do slip up at some point and need to make a playoff case. Yeah. And if they are a top five or top 10 team, then this is a game they need to win uh, Duke. I don't know if Duke has the largest margin of victory on average this season, but 21 point win over Clemson, 35 over Lafayette, 24 over Northwestern, 34 over Connecticut. Uh, I think everybody saw Riley Leonard, the quarterback in the one, the one game they, everybody loved him and were impressed by him. So that's how you expect him to play every week. But I think there's some, positivity for Notre Dame to come into this game knowing that they have to have moved past last week. Like they need all of their focus on this game. This is not a sneaky game. A sneaky game would be like Ohio State going to Maryland or something or Maryland coming to Ohio State. Like, you know, if the Maryland game was this week, this isn't sneaky at all. They need all of their attention on this one. Unfortunately, all of Notre Dame's attention still does not mean that they have enough attention, you know, as based on the last two plays that we saw of that Ohio State game. Sometimes it's not enough. You need 11 elevenths of attention, not 10 elevenths of attention. But I do think Notre Dame will have all of, will have all of the attention they need in this one. I just don't know if they'll have all of the execution. What is Sam Hartman? Is Sam Hartman a Duke killer? I, I don't know. Going back through my, uh, my Wake Forest days, I'm not sure exactly if he was or wasn't. Most people should be if you play them enough. But I feel like if, if Notre Dame doesn't win this, that's not devastating for Ohio State but it hurts Ohio State. Uh, so root for Notre Dame, root, root for old Notre Dame. Be be good uh, college football fans, Ohio State fans. I know I know. when we, we would tell people to root for Michigan, they would say no. But here, <laughs> what's what's the Harmon rooting for Notre Dame? Boy, boy the, the question man has asked himself low <laughs> so many times over the years. Uh, Sam Hartman against Notre Dame, against Duke, sorry, while at Wake Forest. Uh, 59-7 win in 2018. I'm not sure how much he played in that one. 39-27 win in Winston-Salem in, in 2019. They did not play in 2020. I wonder why. Uh, 2021, 45-7. Uh, uh, North Car uh, Wake Forest win in Winston-Salem. 2022, Duke got him 34-31 in Durham. So uh, there's your there's your answer. Three and three and one, uh, but. You know, lost lost last year in Durham to a Mike Elko team. So we'll see how Notre Dame fares. Uh, boy, that that is a that is a like sneaky big game for Ohio State's playoff case. 
Um, and again, that's if Ohio State needs help making a playoff case, which there's a lot of there's a lot of football season left. And uh, th- th- but that'll yeah, boy, Notre Dame trying to bounce back from that not only the loss but how they lost that game. That is going to be. I wonder what day this week they really were able to turn the page because normally you want to do it on Monday. It would not surprise me if that guy had got into Tuesday or Wednesday. And every time you watch that film, that knife twists just a little bit more. So yeah, that'll be a big one this weekend. But uh, some yeah, really, really interesting games coming up this weekend. So enjoy those. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, tur- with us sort of uh, beginning to turn the page a little bit as well towards the uh, towards the Buckeyes' upcoming game against Maryland. We may have one more one more show or so uh, coming up. We've got some Ross Fulton content coming up the next few days. Gonna have Tony back on tomorrow's show. We got a, got a listener question that we felt merited an entire a entire show worth of discussion. So we'll have Tony on tomorrow's show. Then we'll have a certain turn of the page towards the Maryland game. So hope you guys enjoy the football today. Make sure you check out BuckeyeHuddle.com and our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.